It's that time of the week where, of course, we like to break down stories from the three different levels of government. CTV political commentator Scott Reed joins us now to talk more about this. The first topic, Scott, I find really interesting because I'm not sure which audience this is for. Is right. this for NATO? Is this for Donald Trump or is this for domestic uh, <laughs> consumption? The Fed's announcing this updated defense policy. It's a big one, $73 billion over 20 years, Arctic expansion, combating cyber attacks, et cetera. Still doesn't get us to our NATO commitments, but is right. it an enhancement? I don't know. How do you break all of this down? So we can be sure that it's not for Donald Trump, because if it was, one of the $73 billion would have been funneled to a family member of his. So <laughs> that we can take off the table. Okay. Like, I, I think what's interesting about this is, no, it, it won't meet the NATO commitment of 2%. But here's the ugly truth. Uh, people pay lip service to that as a political priority, mm -hmm. um, not just governments, but also voters and pundits and all that kind of stuff. People don't vote on this basis. Mm -hmm. like when we have the next election, people are not going to say, you know what, I'd rather that we do more on defense and less on health care. That's just not the way the cookie crumbles politically. But it's still important to be there. I thought two things that were interesting about it, one that they did and one that they didn't do. First thing is that they make more commitments to the north and trying to patrol. That is important to our NATO allies. Mm -hmm. They are anxious as climate change opens up water lanes, sea lanes, the oceans in the north that Russia and China are gobbling up territory. They are mapping it. They are all over the place mm -hmm. and we are not. So that's an important part that we can play. The thing that we didn't do, and I don't know how to do it, but damn it, somebody needs to learn how to do it, figure out how to do it and start doing it. And that is to unscrew up the federal procurement process mm -hmm. when it comes to large military purchases. That's where Polly was going at them. This yeah. is what paralyzes everybody. Mm -hmm. And I've watched it happen over government and over government and over government. You can imagine the Harper guys came in, they're like, my God, we're going to spend money on big military purchases. And then it gets gummed up inside mm -hmm. this complicated procurement because you're not going to have that many people bidding. They are billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. People make tens and maybe hundreds of millions of dollars on commissions off of these things. Yeah. And so you got to be very careful how you do it. And until we get that figured out, mm -hmm. a bunch of these purchases are going to be stranded on paper and not going to be in real. Right. It's really interesting. So it doesn't even matter geopolitically, eh? like whether it's, you know, Israel, Hamas or Ukraine, Russia, or I'm thinking in your time, you know, with Paul Martin back up post 2001, 9-11, yeah. uh, people really aren't voting specifically on that. That's still low on the priorities. It, it really is. And people, and it's a sad thing to say, because yeah. obviously everybody w will nod their head ven vehemently saying mm -hmm. we want our troops well equipped uh, you know when I was there we put troops into uh, Kandahar yeah dangerous mission in yeah. Afghanistan so you want to make certain they're well equipped but when push comes to shove people say yes to defense unless right. it's ranked on a list of 10 issues and then it drops gotcha. so gotcha. when you've got uh, limited resources you have to make tough decisions well let's talk about this other story a curious one came out yesterday premier Doug Ford pushing the LCBO to bring back the paper bags uh, I have seen people anecdotally walking out of liquor stores sort of you know juggling yeah. and carrying or sort of juggling things around flats he's saying bring back the paper bags <laughs> what do you make of this because the opposition came right after him for this so I think this is a trap for the opposition mm. they're like oh my god this is Doug Ford you know you know, panhandling again and, and, and just, you know, playing to the crowd, but, and he doesn't have the right political priorities and he should be focused on housing, not booze all the time, buck a beer and now paper bags at LCBO. Um, first of all, it wasn't that big a deal for me because I buy in bulk. So right. when so I go in, the, cases? I like the boxes because yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm stuffing everything in there yeah. and I want large Same. volumes. <laughs> um, but I... I think this is a trap for the opposition, and, and that's what I really wanted to highlight. Mm -hmm. Doug Ford knows his constituency. He knows that there's lots of, you know, lunch bucket folks and the rest of us going into the LCBO. Suddenly they can't get a paper bag. And sure, we can have an environmental argument about it, mm -hmm. but when he makes this a political issue, it rises to the headline in the Ottawa Sun, the Toronto mm -hmm. Sun, and then all of a sudden... You know, the opposition says he's got the wrong priorities and they alienate themselves. Mm. Let this one pass. Don't try to take on this fight. Don't get sucked into it. You're playing Premier Ford's game. He's a better populist politician than you are, Bonnie Crombie or Marit Stiles. Stay out of the way of this thing. It's not a fight you want. Uh, let's I only have about 30 seconds, but this uh, pro-Palestinian protest a couple of weekends ago, six councillors in the city, you know, releasing this joint statement, calling for police to protect the right to protest, police union not happy, et cetera. Uh, what's your take on this? TPA, you know, hasn't been silent. How's the mayor going to navigate this? Well, so the mayor's kind of taken a hands-off thing. I would say this. Two of the members who signed that letter, okay, um, 
two of them are on the police services board. Mm -hmm. I think that should be a disqualifying move. Mm -hmm. And it is going to, and the reason I want to raise it today is that it's going to be an ongoing headache yeah. for the mayor. These protests and how the cops handle it mm -hmm. is going to continue to be a matter of controversy because these protests aren't going anywhere. And I don't know how you can have two members who are on the police services board and one of whom says, well, you know what, I didn't really mean to sign the final letter. Right. I was a very busy day and I didn't actually look at it. Yeah. Um, are you doing your job or are you not doing your job? If you're on the police services board, you shouldn't be doing this. It's in uncomfortable and impossible for the mayor to defend people, mm -hmm. counselors on the police services board, signing that letter. So she's going to have to figure out how to navigate it. This issue is going to continue to dog her and mm -hmm. it's going to continue to dog those members. And if I was on the police services board and I wasn't one of those counselors, boy, I'd be shutting the door, going in camera and giving them a blast. Yeah. Okay. We'll see how this continues to unfold because like you said, it's not going away seven months in uh, after the Israel Hamas war. Yeah. Scott Reed, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much.